switch on switch off switch on switch off switch on switch off welcome to the world of network switches welcome to ccna 203.1 implementing and administering cisco solution chapter number 6 network switch in this chapter we will learn about the network switches and their functionality and we will discuss about the multiple features of network switches what is switching let's discuss about the process of switching now in the screen we can see four electric bulbs are connected to one battery each bulb connected to the battery with the help of switch bulb number 1 is connected to battery with the help of a switch 1 and bulb number 2 with the help of switch 2 bulb number 3 with the help of switch 3 and bulb number 4 with the help of switch 4 now what is the function of switch when we put the switch in on position the electricity from the battery is flowing through the bulb and bulb generate the light now on the other hand when we put the switch in off position the electricity doesn't flow through the bulb because the switch cuts the flowing of electricity so that means there is no light from the bulb this is the simple example of the process of switching the basic definition of a switching is to forward the data from one place to another switch the network junction box why do we call switch as a network junction box because simply saying switch perform the function of a network junction box what is the purpose of a network junction box in electric circuit its function is to have a centralized connection to the all nodes in the same way a switch can function as a junction box in a network that means it can provide the connectivity to all the devices available in that network it can be a computer it can be a laptop it can be a server ip camera or printer etc switch function as a network junction box and help the devices to communicate each other in a network so what is a network so a computer network is a collection of interconnected computers and other devices that are designed to communicate with each other and share the resources in this picture we can see the network switch working as a junction box all the devices in that network is connected to the switch and switch working as a centralized point of contact here the switch help the devices to communicate each other and to send and receive the data now let's talk about the definition of the switch A network switch is a networking hardware that connect devices on a computer network by using packet switching to receive and forward the data to the destination device. This is the simple definition of a network switch. Basically it is a hardware that helps to connect multiple devices in a network and switch the data from one device to another device. And here we can see the symbol of network switches. So this is the most commonly used symbols that we can see network switches in any network diagram. We can use these three different kind of network switch symbols. And again the real image of network switch it is provided here. This is a 48 port Cisco switch. Now let's discuss about the features of network switches. A network switch is a centralized connection point of the devices that plugged into that network. Let's consider the network diagram shown in the screen. Here we can see multiple devices like laptop, desktop, server, camera, printer are connected to a network switch. Here the network switch help the devices to connect together and communicate with each other. Here we can see that the network switch is working as a centralized connection point of all the devices plugged into that network. Each network data will be passing through the network switch. That's why we call the network switch is a centralized connection point in a network. Switches are the third generation devices. Why do we call switches as a third generation device? Because there is already a first generation and second generation device exist. Yes. 
they are hubs and bridges when we talk about the ethernet history in initial stages network hubs were used to connect the devices into the network even they have a lot of limitation they were very popular and using in all network so the network hubs are considered the first generation devices but the network hubs are very slow and they have only a single collision domain to resolve this issue then the network bridge came to the action and then network bridge are called second generation devices then later the network switch came to the life so they call the third generation devices after the network hub and network bridge switches are packed with asic chips what is this asic chip asic stands for application specific integrated circuits the switches are functioning based on their hardware performance asic chips help the network switches to perform the switching operation in wired speed switches are typically available in 4 8 16 24 and 48 ports the network switches are available in various port requirement starting from port number 4 to port number 48 we can decide we can decide which model we want to use based on the port requirement for example if we want to connect less number of devices then no need to purchase a 48 port switch because it is highly expensive so it is better to decide your switch based on your requirement we can connect multiple switches in daisy chain mode to get more ports why do we need to do that thing just imagine we have a four port network switch and we need to connect a single pc to that network port that is absolutely fine because we have four ports available in the switch but what if we want to connect more devices into the switch we can connect one more pc to this four port switch and we can connect a third pc to this four port switch but what if we want to connect more devices into the network we have very limited number of ports available in the switch so how do we make that thing so we can connect multiple switches in series in daisy chain mode to get more ports for example we can connect a switch number 2 in series with the switch number 1 and we can utilize this port available in the switch number 2 and again we can connect another switch number 3 to the switch number 2 and use the port available in the switch number 3 in this way we can connect multiple switches in a series and utilize all the network ports available in all the switches into a single network in this way we can expand our network to occupy more devices switches are intelligent devices why switches are called intelligent devices let's see we all know that in the ethernet history the network hub was the first device we used to connect devices in the network they were very slow and they had a lot of limitation to transfer data between the devices for example they have a single collision domain that means even we connected multiple devices into a network hub only a single device can either send or receive the data at a time for example we can see the multiple pcs are connected to a single hub and we all know that the hubs are the devices with single collision domain now let's imagine the pc1 want to send the data to pc5 the network hubs are the devices with broadcasting characteristic that means even the pc1 send the data to pc5 they are broadcasting that traffic to all interface of the hub that means the same data will go to the pc2 the same data will transfer to the pc3 and the same data will go to the pc4 but pc2 pc3 and pc4 they reject the data because they are not marked as the destination device for this data so pc5 is only the one who mark as a destination device so they will receive the data and the another thing is network hubs are working in the half two plus mode that means only a single device can either send or receive the data at a time they cannot send and receive the data at a time when more than one device try to send the data at the same time then collision can happen that's why the network hubs are very slow in the operation so now we understood that the network hubs are not intelligent at all 
because they broadcast the data to all interface of it that's why we call the switches are the intelligent device why we call switches are intelligent because they learn mac address of the device connected to in and forward the packets to them how switch does that let's consider a network diagram as shown in the screen that multiple devices are connected to a network switch and switch is working as a centralized hub for all the network devices let's consider a network switch with no device connected into that in this situation the mac address table of the network switch is empty now let's imagine we have connected one device at ethernet one interface of the network switch now what will happen when we connect one device into the switch switch try to learn the mac address of that device and store that mac address into its mac address table for example when we connect this device switch learn its mac address and store into its mac address table so just imagine the physical address of the device is as sh shown in the picture okay so when we connect this device to switch switch learn that mac address and add that mac address to its mac address table so here we can see the same mac address of this device will store into the mac address table in the same way when we connect the second device switch take its mac address to the mac address table again and this process repeat for all the device connected to switch switch store the mac address of all the devices into its mac address table so once the switch has mac address table of all the devices switch know which device is connected to which interface so when there is a network traffic switch can easily understand this device is connected to which interface and it can forward that traffic to that interface only switches learn mac address of the devices connected to it as we discussed when a device connected to a network switch network switch trying to learn its mac address and add that mac address into its mac address table so that it can easily recognize in which interface that device is, is connected to it helps network switch to forward the network traffic to the destination device in an easy way switches works at the data link layer of the osa model we know that the network hubs are the first generation devices and they are working at the physical layer of the osa model it is because they are blindly forward the network traffic to every interface of it without knowing anything about the ethernet packet but switches are the third generation devices and they operate at the data link layer of the osa model unlike the network hub switches learn the mac address of the devices and understand the source and destination mac address and forward the traffic accordingly each interface of the switch is a collision domain the first generation device hubs we know the hub has a single collision domain that means any one of the device can either send or receive the data at a time but in network switch every interface of a network switch is a collision domain that means every device can send and receive the data at the same time without any issue because there is no a single collision domain in this picture we can see there are four tracks available and each track represent the interface of a switch here we can see there are four tracks and four cars each car can go to the track at the same time and come back through the same track in the same way each interface of the switch the devices can send the data and receive the data at the same time without affecting the other interface or any other devices to explain this in more detail we can consider the network diagram shown in the screen here five pcs are connected to a single network hub and as we know the network hubs are with a single collision domain that means any one of the device can either send or receive the data at the same time now the pc1 want to send a data to pc5 so at the same time if pc3 want to send the data to pc4 but when these devices pc1 and pc3 try to send the data at the same time the collision can happen because the hub has a single collision domain and they are working in the half duplex mode that means either a device can send or receive the data but cannot send and receive the data at the same time now consider the below network diagram shown in the screen here four computers are connected to a network switch as we know 
each interface of a network switch is a collision domain that means the computer 1 can send the data to computer 4 at the same time computer 3 can send the data to computer 2 because they are connected to different interface each interface of the switch is a different collision domain so it doesn't affect the devices connected to the other interface switches can work in full duplex mode that means they can send and receive the data at the same time So what is the difference between half duplex mode and full duplex mode let's discuss now in this image we can see there is a computer 1 and computer 2 now let's see what is the half duplex mode in half duplex mode the computer 1 can either send the data or receive the data at a time so that means it can do either send or receive the data but full duplex mode means the computer 1 can send the data and receive the data at the same time they can do both together so this is the difference between half duplex mode and full duplex mode in this chapter we have learned about the network switches and their functionality and we have discussed about the multiple features of the network switches thank you for watching subscribe to the channel for more videos